to your orgasm. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. The Boys, Season 3, Episode 6, Herogasm. For this review, after show, I have a whole panel. Each of these men, you in one way, shape, or form, are going to get their small reactions within the last few days. So now we are finally getting to talk about it in spoiler format. This craziness that I cannot believe is on a streaming service. <laughs> but we have here full panel. We have Jedi Mike. What's going on, brother? Mm -hmm. We are in confusing times. Very. Yeah. <laughs> Very. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. We've got Keaton. What's going on, man? <laughs> I'm doing good. How y'all doing? Traumatized, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, the man that started this, Jorge, he is back. What's going on, dude? What's going on? What a way to come back from vacation to uh to this. <laughs> yeah. Hero gasm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, huge comeback. So um unanimously, can we all say that this was one of the most insane episodes of the boys and probably one of the trippiest things we've seen in a very long time. I, but I'm curious, like, how do you guys feel about episode six? And this is spoiler the field. So if you guys ain't seen the episode yet, look, that was the best non-spoiler intro i could give you guys let's just go for it so yeah. how are you guys feeling jorge you first how do um, you feel about this episode it was it <laughs> there was a lot in this episode uh, i'll just i'll start with that there was a lot um it's interesting because like the the back half of the episode is kind of the whole you know anniversary hero gasm thing um which is which was interesting, but the, the <laughs> there we go. The the first half, like there was so much that happened, like in terms of everything that's happening. I thought this episode like revealed so much because it had Frenchie's storyline. Um, it had Mother's Milk, like all his stuff. Like this episode was jam packed with so much stuff. That it throws me off that it literally was only an hour. Like I'm I'm kind of mm -hmm. surprised because it, it flew by quickly, but it was slow at the same time, if that makes sense. Like you got so much backstory and then you got crazy shenanigans at the end. But no, I I I love this episode. This was I am shocked this is allowed to be on TV. That that's the nicest way I'll put it. Oh, it's gonna be banned in some other country, most likely. Uh <laughs> I mean, I, I can tell you this, opening up doors now, I am going to forever be very fearful. <laughs> <laughs> King, uh, you had a very interesting reaction to everybody's seen or have seen at this point on Thursday. Um, what did you think about this episode? I, You know, I feel like this episode was Amazon saying for the rest of our time here on earth we're gonna do whatever we want <laughs> uh, like real talk i like if if i listed out reasons that something could be rated r or nc honestly i would say even nc 17 here there you go oh, yeah there absolutely. you go it would they they covered it they covered all <laughs> of it and the thing the thing that's so funny is I was thinking, oh, this episode's going to be insane because of a bunch of dudes with the dicks out, right? Like, I was thinking that was going to be what did it. But they put so much more into this episode. And so at the end, I'm sitting here thinking this is going to be one of the most ridiculous episodes of The Boys that I ever saw uh, at the beginning. And then at the end, I was left with, this is one of the best episodes of the boys right. that I ever saw after seeing what they did with the story, what they did showing you the full picture and the backstory and all of these different characters, relationships, like it really comes to a head in this episode. Mm -hmm. Like it got to mm -hmm. feel like, you know how in game of Thrones, it wasn't always the season finale. That was the most insane. It was the second to last episode. That was the most insane. Right. Like, yeah. That's the feeling that I got out of the Hero Gasm episode. It was like, I need to know what happens next because that was absolutely insane. Because what they, I, what I thought was going to happen in the series finale 
they straight up started it in this one. So I was I was blown away. Like my jaw was on the floor the entire time. It's a good thing you were I was we were viewed it on StreamYard because man, it would have been wild. Mm-hmm. No, probably should have actually recorded your reaction. Um <laughs> But Jedi Mike, last but not least, uh, what are your brief thoughts on this? And then we're going to start to go and pull apart this episode, no pun intended. Mm. Yeah. Um, as much as, uh, as I just said, like, you know, you know, the lines are blurred, you know, in terms of what we can you know, do in this in terms of media today. Um, HBO, I apologize. Um, I just want to, I just want to say that, you know, when you went through Game of Thrones, I had, I had some things, I saw some things that, at the time when I was a younger man, I thought, you know, I would never see. But <laughs> now I'm like, now I'm like, you know, I'm grown to 23. I saw like, nah, you, you, you haven't, you all right. HBO did not, the, has not done this. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and going to that, I think that the theme of this, the theme of this is like, you know, as I said, lines being drawn, like anything can happen. Lines can turn to what we can do on the show, the content the character's motivation, what they do, what they compromise, what they say they wouldn't do, now what you saw they do. Um, yeah, like I said, this show just took, just took a turn. Um, best episode of the series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think all you guys have hit the nail on the head. So let's start to pick this thing apart. So I think the best way we can do it is based on people's storyline. Let's, let's take what they did with uh, man, we could take anybody and they just yeah. did so much with them. So let's use uh, A-Train, for example. Oh, God. So, so man, A-Train... Know, big, we... <laughs> no, 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 we, gotta, we gotta go through everything. We gotta start from the bottom and come to the top. That's but no, it, it. is it the bottom, though? Because no, they, that's what they, I'm they, saying. I'm so right. right. so 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 with like Frenchie. Like, <laughs> right. Right, because two episodes ago, you know, he... He talked with his brother. His brother let him know, like, look, like, there's literally a superhero out here curb stomping the black community, and they are blatantly being racist out here. Can you do something about it? He goes to um, Ashley, sets up a meeting, tries to do something about it. You can tell off rip that this was not going well. Last episode, he brought him to the center to apologize. This man assaults everybody and cripples his brother. He yeah. goes to Ashley. Is like I need retribution for this joint. Then in this episode, he goes and he's like trying to chill. Um, Starlight is like, look, why did you sell this other person out? Like, it, do you not know where you're coming? You know. And Huey has a moment with him for the very first time because Huey was already on ten, and he was ready to go off on this man, and he legit got this revelation and understand like man yo i do need to apologize like i have ended lives like i i'm wrong in this and he was still slugs him throws him off but he sees old dude and he drug his tail that whole moment in his arc of this i could not believe how they set that up but just using him as an example like i'm just so surprised i'm so surprised how they've done so much in this season to end us right where we are right now, to not knowing where the characters are even going to go because he has a heart attack. He's having a heart attack after getting somebody's face miles away. From the east to the west. <laughs> Back to the east. Back to the west. Yes. <laughs> it, Dude. It, I had a feeling it might go down like this. It reminded me there's a scene at the beginning of a movie. It's an old Bruce Willis movie called The Jackal. And the main villain just kills one of his own people mm-hmm. at the table. And he just goes, if I could do this to someone I love, imagine what I would do to somebody I hated. We know that A-Train is capable of killing. And we've seen him kill someone that he actually cares about just right. because that's what I'm going to do. So someone that crippled his brother. Right. It. He he even put his own self worth aside. He oh, yeah. he he went in. He was like, "Look, if my heart explodes. My heart explodes." He got to get it. And right. It was it was my favorite, and it's weird because I hate pulling for A Train because he's garbage, right? But at right. the same time, it's like man, <laughs> seeing that come full circle. It's like, yo. Like I'm, I'm just left like, yeah, that's right. Black Lives Matter. I'm like, wait a minute. 
Am I the villain right now? Am I the good guy? Like, it's Joe. <laughs> what is what it done to us? <laughs> what have we become? Right. <laughs> So this reminded me a lot, like his story arc in this episode of like law abiding citizen. Right. Like crummy stuff happens and you're cheering for the villain. Like right. even though he's because I think deep down, like A Train kind of turned a corner. Like that scene that he had with uh Huey made a huge like it, Huey mm-hmm. was ready to throw down and he was just like, Oh, like he gets it. Like he knows what this means now, yeah. you know? Right. Um the thing that's interesting to me was the way Ashley stood up to him. Mm-hmm. Like that was just like her story arc is one that no one really talks about. Right. And he's kind of becoming weird. And and like I, I can see her messing with um with, with some of that uh that green juice uh here in the next few episodes. Uh, dabbling in it to become a little soup herself because she's just some of her stuff is just uh. weird out there and it's it's interesting because if you keep looking like episode like this season alone like yes she's like everyone's afraid of Homelander but it's like she's slowly getting her own little like chi back you know uh, so I don't know I, I think it's going to be interesting but no the whole A-Train thing that the way that ended the episode I was <laughs> It's hilarious because you're cheering for him and with the music, you're hearing like the beat of his heart, like, you know, going, going, just yeah. stopping. Yeah. And that was, once again, a good way of using sound, but that that definitely brought it in for sure. Yeah. I think there's a good, um, there's a good segue from Ashley because I think one of the things that this show showcases is that it's not just about who's the most powerful. And I had a good conversation with Keaton about this. Um it's about perception and what everybody rallied behind. At the end of the day, you know, uh, after everything is said and done, at this current time, the strongest person isn't necessarily the strongest person. Actually, yeah. Starlight right now has the most power behind her. And it's not because, you know, she's so strong or she's so powerful, but she has the public eye. The public eye legitimately looks at her as they, she could do no wrong. And at this point, no matter what she does, I think that she's in the clear. But wow. that that lo- that sense of power is what Ashley knows, even though she has no technical power, that understanding, that perception is what she's holding on to for dear life with. The difference with her and Starlight, Starlight is at this current point, she could care less. Everything that's led up to this point in the beginning of the season, you know, with Maeve kind of leaving with her getting stuck with this without, you know, Stan being there. Um, and the reality is that at any moment, Homelander could kill her. She had to kind of go through it. But then she kind of still held on to hope because, you know, she had Huey. She knew Huey would be okay. Well, no. Huey's putting his life on the line because he feels as though he's been weak and he also wants to protect her. And their whole relationship came to an uh, interesting halt. Last episode, and it got even worse in this one to the point that now she's outed who Hamlander is, what is really happening, and she says that she is done. And that gave her so much more power that she will ever imagine, honestly. But it's it's a dangerous game because I don't know where this is going to go. Um, but I think that that's one of the things about this show is showing it's not just about the most powerful person. It's the perception of what that looks like. Um, but I was curious y'all's perspective on Starlight and and also <laughs> Starlight and Mother's Milk t- teamed up together to go into the Hero Gathering, which we haven't even talked about well, yet. It's well, crazy. speaking on that, well, well, what you know, you made a very good point about power because, like, with Mother's Milk, there's some things about hey, listen, we understand, but also comments is like, come on, bro. Like, there's one scene literally when he when he kept doing this. Like I was like, stop! Like I was like, stop! Like <laughs> especially like when you see two people fighting in the end, and Starlight just like, ah, no, this is stuff you need to see from a distance, you know? <laughs> like, no, no. It, but I get it, and especially the line of Mother's Milk, because there's a whole thing about like, you know what? Screw it, me being the good guy holding this team together, and then I'm I'm just being taken advantage of, and then yet we're no, we're getting taken advantage of by soups. It's like. Mil- Mother's Milk and Starlight are in very, very similar situations to a point that makes sense why she- why he called her in previous episodes. 
right. um and and then realized the point of uh when he was talking to soldier boy like you know you killed my family which one right right it's just like again yeah, that just simply that the one line is in uh emphasizing so much that we probably haven't even seen or we're going to see because you know again before we get into the whole third like third act of it just the build up of him entering the house <laughs> of mother's milk and just not one open the door having some ptsd and then and then just like bumping into people and then all of a sudden just get imploded <laughs> he's just like i had enough i'm done stop <laughs> <laughs> that man, he don't need to go through no more doors. He 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 and this is the weird thing, like he's so O C D yeah. that probably messed him up. He, up. he probably will never be the same. And I felt like last season with the guy with the, the long penis that kind of wrapped around this man's Love neck, sausage. Um I thought that, that was bad, but what he what happened to him and worse. Like yeah, he not his only poor jacket, his poor jacket that pushed in his jacket face too. in his jacket. But then he gets met with his literal trauma in front of him, and he's powerless to do anything about it. Matter of fact, the crazy thing is, um, your boy uh, Butcher had to save him from himself. No, like yeah. it's it's crazy because it's it's sad and crazy at the same that time because you know for a fact like their relationship ain't never gonna be the same. Like after these last two episodes, it's it's never gonna be the same. And that's why yeah. I said last time, like with Mike, I don't know if Butcher's gonna make it out this season. Like he's crossed all lines, and I don't know what this stuff is doing to his body either. Um, but but I will say this: like you, uh, Jorge made a point, uh, made a good point, talking about what the uh, um, with the with the temporary compound V. We know in the comics, every one of the boys got it, and as as of right now, the only two people don't got it is uh, Frenchie and Mother's Milk. I'm like Frenchie's protected, so he could got you no. Know, the female, you know, Kimiko. But I'm now every, I, for me, I'm waiting for for Mother's Milk to take it. And because what they're doing different from the comics, and now they all had differential powers of just vulnerability and a little bit of super strength. I'm I'm curious to see what his abilities will be if he takes the Compound V. And in, in the line that this whole thing in the show talk like with uh with her when she was talking to Starlight about Maeve, she's like her being afraid of Homelander. Like I'm human. Mm -hmm. I'm human. So like again, it's just thinking that you human, you weak, you you're not, you have a dog in this fight, and same yeah. thing with Huey. I've been powerless for three seasons. Enough is enough. I can't protect you. Yeah. You know, it was yeah, it was good. It was funny, man, because watching, what watching this episode the whole time, every time I saw Mother's Milk, either Starlight or Butcher were like uh, Doctor Dre in <laughs> Guilty Conscience, like. Uh, <laughs> Like, don't do it, man. Don't, just, no, whatever no, you're no. thinking, like, just don't. Just please don't. Like, you know you can't. You know you can't do that. Like, if you butcher sitting there like, man, if you can't take me, you definitely don't need to be going. Don't back. even need to try. Don't try. even need to this, try. Back um, this way. But my man, man, whew, mother's, yeah, he got, he literally so, got hit with it. Like, <laughs> So I'm going to ask y'all a question, and I think this will gauge where you guys excitement is what would you guys rather talk about the actual hero gasms and the craziness that we actually did see or the fight <laughs> with homelander <laughs> soldier boy butcher and huey what right. would y'all rather talk about right now the fight yeah, because the, the hero gasms, <laughs> that's just, that's, just late, that's just late night showtime we can that's, that's all star yeah. hey, no listen <laughs> three on one fight and, and let, the first time you saw Homelander now because he had two. He had two like this in, in a season where he's trickling down power. And Edgar, he knew what was coming. He's like, okay, like you know, you taking this power and all this stuff because he had an eternal struggle of him being, you know, uh, feeling like he has no power of, in, of in his, uh, insecurity. But then secondly, now it's like, okay, me just being the strongest one is now is like Soldier Boy's back. Saw the fear in his face. He's like, that's that's freaking Soldier Boy. I looked up to you when I was a kid. Oh, you know, yeah. I I'm you. I'm the upgrade. And then now, all of a sudden, you know, you get you get punch, and you know, uh, again, uh, with the uh, someone else who's a with compound V, like Butcher, and then out of, of, of all people, Huey. Yes, <laughs> right. right. He's like, what's that? He's like, what's run. going on? We've never seen him run. We've never seen him shook. And yeah, that Dude. last scene showed it everything. Him looking himself in the mirror with the bruise on his cheek. Right. Right. That's. He right. never thought like, where am I? Where have I gotten to now? Like. It, 
And now at this point, I don't, I don't even know what's left for the remaining of uh, the season because we know again the turning point for not, you know, for him. And I'm just like, okay, what did, what does it mean for the rest of the season for him? Because like he just now he just lost his um his point. Hey, I'm not the powerful one anymore. And then you know what you know, Soldier Boy going down peace by I got Crimson Cure, I got twins, and then Black Noir is like peace. I'm out. So right. what's up with him? Like, you know, he's a ace in the hole. We don't know what's going on with that. So I, I, I just thought again the build up what they're doing. I don't know how they can top this. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, the choreography was was awesome. Like, Jedi, what? you bring up a good point too because with Black Noir, he's come. I, I'm really wondering what they're going to do with his character because it's so vastly different from his character in the comics. Yes. Mm. Yes, and it's, it's even, so yeah. vastly different. Like I was, yeah. When when they when I did find out like that's who Black Noir was, I was like, oh, they're going way off base. Okay. <laughs> so with Homelander, it's interesting because he had an existential crisis. Like you said, Black Noir left him. Everything started crippling around him, and he didn't really know what to do. Even like to try to find and track down stuff, he had to rely on the deep. <laughs> To go and figure out where the twins were to get to them before everything went down. And, oh my God, I'm not even going to go into what the deep was doing no. with that octopus. It's not, it's not worth my time. But Homelander, this man was having a conversation with himself in the mirror. Dude, how dope and was that scene, though? So, so this is the crazy thing about that scene. He, he reveals something to us as the audience that we've kind of thought, but it, it was confirmed. The subconscious part of himself is like, yeah, you are still human. And you're reacting to these people accordingly. That's why you're so worried about these things. And we need to kind of cut that out. As soon as we cut that out, you can be who you really need to be. And it's fascinating that he's not even got to that point. But we've known he's going to hit a breaking point. He's going to hit a breaking point. He's going to hit a breaking point. But what's stopping him? You know, And it's literally his own psyche, which is crazy. Um, <laughs> but I love that in the power struggle of the fight, you know, at first, you know, Soldier Boy was giving it to him, but he kind of like, you know, he kind of had to get, you know, broken down a little bit. Like he, he was starting to lose. And mm -hmm. then Butcher showed up and I was like, yo, Butcher and Soldier Boy. Okay. All right. But then Huey jumped in and I was just like, the way that they set that fight up, they're going to be talking about that joint for years because yeah <laughs> like, oh yeah. my god down like on the floor like they are they're pressing him down i was they, like they yo they were about to end that man <laughs> oh, it man. was funny man because the beginning of this episode like i said going in i thought the whole point was going to be this weird this weird superhero origin and i'm like wait homelander getting jumped right now they running a fade on homelander oh they doing, they doing oh, the like, yeah, i was world star at my tv like <laughs> it was oh, wild. Goodness. I just it's it, he came seconds away from, and this is the weird thing about Soldier Boy's power. It may it actually could have killed all of them. Yeah. If yeah. it didn't, yeah. if it didn't kill all of them, it would have at least gotten rid of Homelander's power, because we know that Kamiko took a direct blast from it as a suit, and she survived, but she lost her power. If Homelander takes a direct shot, he may not die, but he would lose his power. But mm -hmm. I would I would fear that Butcher and um your boy Huey would have probably died. And I didn't think about it. in the moment I was like, yo, kill him, kill him. But I didn't think about the fact that yo, they they were willing to sacrifice themselves. And that's crazy. That's how mm -hmm. far these people have come um to end this man. It's just insane. Now did, did that fight bring up because for me when I was watching it. It, it just brought up that uh, Iron Man Captain America fight. Yeah. Did that like just? Yeah, see, I know what like, you're talking about. Yeah. It, it's yeah. like the more I kept seeing the scene, I was like, "Oh, this is dope. This is." And all I and especially when they did the uh, the double eye laser shot, oh, like yes. that just reminded me so much of that one shot that like everyone like screen saved basically was when um, when Iron Man was shooting his at uh, the shield. Yeah, at the shield. But you look at that, and I was like, "Oh, that's." It's just so well done. Like that was probably one of the coolest fighting scenes, and I would I would even put the whole scene with Frenchie and uh, Kamiko and all them. Like, that was another one that I was like, okay, I'm like, 
Kimiko is is a okay in my book. Like she she's a true gangster. Like no superpowers, but she still right. she still did her business. Do you think she's gonna get her powers back? She she basically did. I mean, I, well, I think she's gonna no. no, no. I, so this is my thing about. I the was confused fight. at what I was watching. Like, did the, did I, the bullets actually go through the dude and hit her, and she just healed, or like I was confused. I don't. I don't, I don't think that she supposedly. I don't think she got hit. But I don't know. It, what it led me to believe was that, and she said it, because the reason why I was kind of like, oh, she got a problem. Like, no, like, she alluded that I'm the monster, you know? Yeah. Like, this was in me outside of just abilities. I can't escape myself, essentially. But everything she used, she used practical. She used weapons. Like, she didn't do anything superhuman, because honestly, before, even her fingers would dig into people like Wolverine. Yeah. So she didn't do any of that. I think she just is a whole pound. I don't. I don't know what to say. <laughs> like it was an amazingly uh, orchestrated, choreographed scene because I honestly didn't know what was gonna happen. The way they had Frenchie up there, butt naked, and I was like, "Yo, they about to kill old other girl." Yeah. They both both the girls got butt, but Kamiko said, "Nah, homie, <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> you about to die. All of y'all about to die." But no, it was. I think it was well choreographed, but I think that the reality was to show that even without powers, that's what's in her. But I do think that she needs to get her powers back because I they think gonna what's going to end... <laughs> They're going to need I, it. I, now, I think you... what the real problem is going to be is this man right here. Well, that's what and... I... Do you go think ahead, that, that once... Because she lost technically her power to reheal herself, theoretically. So do you think that once she takes... Because I can see her taking the compound V again, like to do like, because I, I can see them all teaming up to take on, you know, Soldier Boy at the end. But do you think she'll get the same powers back or something different? No, I, I think it's the same I, same powers. I think it's probably just need like a jump. Yeah, yeah I think <laughs> uh, that's, that's really. <laughs> but Eleven <'Cause laughs> got the same thing going on right now. Well, yeah. it, it's interesting because, uh, yeah. like, obviously, like Butcher and Huey. Once they they injected, like they have the same power, you know, like the teleporting and all that stuff. Yeah. But I just I wonder if if a soup basically takes it, or former soup, if they get a new type of thing. Well, well, A Train he he took the actual V when he was already a soup. So and but he was just getting high off of it. So um, well, and it was it was yeah, also so, amplifying his powers too. He's amplifying his power. So yeah, that I think that would be temporary. That yeah, I think it's just a like yeah, a jump. Like honestly. But but going to a point with Soldier Boy, like let's keep it a buck. We're dealing with another white supremacist. You start a hero gasm with uh, Lady Liberty or Stormfront, yeah. Like you know, and the, oh man, I didn't the, even think about. Yeah, I, I like, if we just that. asked that line, like, yo, the only reason why you the, there's a reason why, uh, uh, uh was it he's working with um was uh Butcher and Huey and Mother's Milk. Frenchy, who's Italian, and Kimiko, who's Asian, are all of those other people are away. So the minorities <laughs> are away. So now it's like, I'm only helping y'all. And he'll now, when we all get the boys back together, like, hey, I'm not. Wait, who are you guys? No. No. Right. Like the females, <laughs> the minorities, they're all on a separate sect. That's hey. interesting. I didn't yeah. even think about that. The um, woman? Hell. <laughs> who was it that uh, he brought up Lady Liberty too? Was that Huey that caught on to who Lady Liberty was? They just looked at each other like, uh, yeah, like it was, yeah. It was when Huey, he said I that, think. like, yeah, we start hero guys with like with Lady Liberty. You know, yeah, right. she no, she's a crazy, you know, she's a real one, I you know, icy one. I completely missed I the, about that the, the Lady Liberty about connection. I completely mm. missed that. I'm like, oh, man. Was, don't throw she, away that line. Don't throw yeah. like, Jeez. dude. Um, and, and technically, Stormfront is still alive. No, no she did. No, no, she no, she did. She, she done. Who was? Who's the one in? I think like two episodes ago that was in the like the the bed that. Homeland yeah, she killed herself. Yeah, yeah, but she killed herself. That was she, but, that episode, one really, episode ago. Uh, beginning of the alleged. Well, well, let's say allegedly. We know she's dead, but we don't know what. Like, because she said they they said that she bit her tongue and she just she kinda, bit her own tongue out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And because yeah, remember, like Homelander kind of like was like done with her. And kind of did his own thing once Edgar dipped, and so yeah. it was like he didn't he didn't give her any more attention. And I think the very last scene showed her kind of he he was asking her a question. She couldn't she, literally physically respond. 
And then he walked out and she was crying. And then she kind of said what she was trying to say. But but yeah, she's supposedly dead at this point. Um, but yeah, dude. So I guess we gotta talk about the foolishness that we actually saw. So Dude, I, I don't know how they got away with all this, but to be fair, the first episode, the moment that uh, Ant-Man character, Termite. whatever his name is, went into a man's penis and exploded from there, I kind of yeah. felt like anything could happen. So I, I think that if they, if they had waited to show that during, you know, Hero Gasm, then I wouldn't have been as shocked as what I saw. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I feel like if, <laughs> I can't believe they get away with it. Boy, I'm not surprised because at this point, this show is just. Dude, what do you? I, I I completely get that they get away with it. Amazon is literally Vault Industries. Like they're the same. <laughs> like, they made a show about themselves, so like, of course, they get away with it. Like they do whatever they want, man. I mean, they, I was thinking about that from the beginning of the episode when they had the sing along. I'm like, man, they got everybody in this. They pulled in a list celebrities just to sing a song, like. And we have we have sub we had no we have uh the, the own their own producers or show uh masturbating <laughs> um, like oh man I like you know but it's like even then I've seen like I said I so I've seen so many like dildos this year not even with this show with other properties and just like you know with Euphoria um the with the you know everything everywhere all at once and then this I've seen dildos that have been on fire I've seen frozen dildos I've seen light ones up I've saw black ones. Ones that are flexible, like you know, different brands, different you know, uh, like like collectibles, like Pokemon cards, and I mean, seriously, it's just. Yeah, I mean, that yeah, Mike out here giving, giving, giving free shout outs to Adam and Eve. I, I mean, seriously, it's just like it's Use this promotional code for ten percent discount. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag home light. <laughs> <laughs> Um, moving forward, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, you think they're actually the, gonna sell those? I mean, they could, <laughs> I, I they don't, could totally sell that. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, definitely. I don't, I don't, I don't even want to know. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I have a theory about Black Noir. So, Black mm. Noir, he basically defected, he tore out his chip yeah. in the middle of the elevator, gave it to an unseemly woman, and dipped, you know. Right. Um, but the weird thing is that Black Noir was the person that grabbed Mae. Right. And anytime you have a character that just disappears and nobody knows where they are, they're not dead until it's confirmed. Oh no, now, whether or not she's no. whether or not she's you being didn't tortured, see bodies, so she ain't done. Right. But it would be interesting if Black Noir and her were actually working together. But I, I don't know. I was curious y'all's perspective on that, but I feel like he would have to be going to someone. And somebody pointed that out. It's like, he's reporting to somebody. Yeah, but right. wait. It seems like he, he's trying to just find uh, Soldier Boy again. Because that was how he started. Like, that was his 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 go-to leader, you know? No, no, no. I, the way I took it was because uh, Soldier Boy was his leader, but Soldier Boy is going and killing every single every one single. of the members. And, and so, they added him out saying it's black no hey it's noir but then he responded yeah. noir would not do anything without vot which then will vot equals ecker which who also left true that's a good point so, right. edgar I think, edgar I, is gone that's right what if he's working with the senator now who Ooh. black noir which senator the uh, the, the the one who makes heads Victoria. explode oh, Nadia. Oh, 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 no Nadia, Nadia she's she's chameleon I think they're all in it, like together. I like yeah. my my. I think because that because there's a storyline in the comics that they're going into the like a former uh, either a former super or a former someone from the Vought becomes mm -hmm. the vice president. I think Edgar is transitioning from being CEO to probably getting to the you know into the um the Oval Office. That's what I'm thinking. Um, because that's probably the next thing they're gonna go in terms of power because you know they don't have Stillwell and you know. If you're trying to follow the line with the comics, but again, Nadia is saying like, "I trained her well, play all sides, right?" So, I feel like you know the whole point of her like when she went to the interview and exposed herself to Starlight, saying, "Hey, let's get, hey, let's you know take Homelander down, but hey, let me I need to get my points up, you know, yeah. no play the game." 
And then so, even then teasing her with the nosebleeds and stuff. It just so again, why wouldn't like, they try to put why wouldn't they put Nadia in the over office then? It to me it would make a better sense to put her in that play because she started like the you know calculated hero endeavor. She she brought down a lot. Everybody looks at her as the golden child. As much as Starlight, both of them technically from a power standpoint, they look like they can do no wrong. So to me, I would put her in the Oval Office. It, the, right. the interesting thing would be is that she, the moment that she got there, Edward would come to collect. Right. Because he has everything over her. Yeah. And the moment that she gave her daughter that, she crippled herself. Because she don't know what she gave her daughter, in all honesty. Like, she thinks it's the same original serum, but she really don't know. And Edgar does. Um... So yeah, no, uh, I think that she would make the best play to to the Oval. So that would be an interesting conclusion to the finale um, because there is going into another season. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to conclude this, man, this was a ten out of ten episode to me. I this is the best episode of the boys to me, honestly. Um, what what do you guys have any other thoughts? Anything else we should go over? Uh gosh. I'm just excited to see what comes next. Yeah. I'm uh in a weird way, I don't want Homelander to die. Why? He's such a good character. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like just like the way like just the way he acts and everything and this season just him not caring anymore. It's mm-hmm. been such a cool arc like it would be neat if he almost becomes just like, you know, that like that little fly on the wall that's just bugging you all the time, but you can't quite kill it. Like you hit it a few times and it gets knocked out, but then it flies away. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, no, I just, I, I'm just hoping that there's more epic fights like this. Definitely. This, and it's weird because a lot of people are just gonna focus on like that massive orgy, but I think this episode probably had some of the most mm-hmm. cool, intricate, like close fighting that that we'll see mm-hmm. in a while. Definitely, they got a lot of replay like uh, value on this, like on this oh, show. Yeah. Like, I can't wait to watch it again. Yeah, and but it's be like you know when whether you want to speed through certain scenes, or whatever, like that whole that huge that whole fa- like fight, like you can replay that and say you know, um, be like John Madden. Let's go back to replay uh, yeah. <laughs> and like yeah. Um, yeah. And but again, I don't know how they're gonna top this because then we have like what three episodes left. Right. Um, so I don't know how they're gonna t- t- top that. Especially with really with Soldier Boy, it's like, okay, how you take him out, you know, and or if or or I guess in, in that case, or how are you going to continue him with his story? Just now you've got like, um, we're learning that he's basically marrying, um, Homelander in terms of like his team hating him. Mm-hmm. So my thing is that is that okay, as he's taking out his members, then it's like, how can you see? How can we go to season four and there be the seven again? That's the thing. Like how how can we go back and be like yeah Mave A Train all of us we're all back we might get an extra member so like no how like how are we going to season four and like this as a right. and as and a, yeah I'm oh, sorry you weren't no done. no 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 go ahead well the the thing about this show that's it's doing a good job and we can kind of see it coming from a mile away it's setting up the whole point that even though the suits are the villains like. The, the guys that we look at as the protagonists and the good guys are going to end up being equally as bad, if not worse, that's trying to take out these soups. And that's what it's building towards. And that's why, like, I'm looking at this season. I'm like, man, Butcher is mad sus this season. Like, <laughs> he's been bad, but, like, now... It's like, oh, so he drug, he's drugging mother's milk out, you know, out of the blue. Right. Like, what? Right. It's, so I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this because real rap, if you want to look at it from a DC standpoint, like <laughs> Butcher is kind of like the Batman of this universe, and Homelander is the sick version of Superman. Down to the fact is with Homelander, even in the fight, right? He never had to really fight anybody. Ever. Like he's never had to really have a fight. And Superman, that's always been the situation with Superman, right? Up until a certain person kind of got buck with him. 
And he he finally had to actually defend himself. And he'd never been in that compromising situation. Whereas with Butcher, it's always been him figuring out things on his toes. By any means necessary, kill or take out, uh, incapacitate. By any means necessary, never losing that. But in this one, he's crossed lines that he can never come back from. But I think it really started, honestly, was when the moment that his love died and when he started to live again through this boy and he started to fear that he wasn't going to be able to maintain himself. And like he said, it was like a drug that he couldn't come back from. And so that's how I've always looked at him. It's like, even though he drugged Mother's Milk, he didn't kill Mother's Milk. He probably should have drugged him and kept him out of it or by any means necessary to get what he wants. I'm not justifying what Butch is doing, but I understand the way he's going about doing it because if he didn't, the the way that this is going, there's no way they could win. And I don't even know what winning looks like anymore, but right. I understand why Butch is doing what he's doing because the odds, like, you look at this man right here, dude, no. <laughs> No, by any means necessary, this man would kill everyone. Like, it, and well, who was it in? Um, was it Batman? Was it Ben Affleck's Batman? It's like he could he could kill us all. This man, for real, for a homeland, really could do that and wouldn't bat an eye about it. So right. this it, is a very different situation mm-hmm. where I could see somebody being birthed from that, like Butcher, in a situation like this. It's just it's just insane. So that's my take on it, though. I could be, you, you know, I get what you're saying with the Batman reference, but I, I, I might want to go deeper. I think he might be like the comedian from Watchmen, like some, like slightly, like slightly, just because it was the scene that he had with, um, um, with I forgot, I forgot the characters, like when he basically, like when they dropped down and trying to defuse a riot. You know, and then basically, hey, this is this is America. This is this is the American dream. Screw it. And it's more of like you kind of accepting the reality of like uh, 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 what this country, no, the, oh, what, like what the country is. Oh, but yet yeah. at the same time, at the end, before you know his demise, he realizing and saying like, hey, listen, of his actions, like Butcher's realizing what he's doing now. Like he's realizing before he, he might be doing. He's like he 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 acts before he thinks, right? So I'm thinking mm-hmm. on that note, it just um. There's like certain things I see of certain characters and other properties that do do what he does, but it's just again I think it's different from least for the comics. I think he is ha- having a little bit of remorse because he's just waiting for the job to be done. He just yeah. that's the only that's only his motive right now. Like you know, we get you need to get the job done, and we, whether it means compromising, breaking this team apart, whatever we gotta get our hands dirty, and that is also influencing Huey. So yeah, because yeah. Uh, yeah, Huey is not acting the way he is in the comics because. He's having more, again, I'm like, and I'm liking this direction of him because it's making it more, it's more realistic. It's like it is more you're realistic. surrounded by yeah. soups 24 seven. You're dating a soup, whatever, and and the whole uh, storyline with the whole uh, supersonic and stuff. They easily could have made that love triangle and stuff, but really that's just natural insecurity, you know, mm-hmm. uh, for him in the relationship, which is understandable. Does it make it right that he put on that pressure on Starlight? No, but at the same time, it's like you understand. It, and that's what's relatable about it. But yeah, I, yeah. So it brings up one last thing, I guess, because I feel like this is an interesting thing of having such an interesting actor like this and, and you know, just some actors. Um, when this man shows his real colors, uh, what is, how's that turn going to look for the show? Because he really hasn't just yet. Like he's been subtly just doing things. But we haven't really seen his real colors yet. Hugh has been prying, but he hasn't budged yet. Um, and he's an interesting... He's not like Homelander, and he's not like Butcher. He's very different. And I because they're going such a different route, like you said, from a comic standpoint, how do you guys think the show, from a trajectory standpoint, is going to go? Um, so, oh, I so, don't see it. I, so I honestly think... It's going to mirror this episode, except it's going to be in reverse. What's going to happen is they're going to realize that somehow Homelander is the lesser of two evils compared with Soldier Boy. And instead of it being them jumping Homelander, the three of them might jump Soldier Boy to take 
to take him out. I think that might be what ends up happening, especially after the whole Lady Liberty thing, which I completely missed. Hmm. All right, what's well, your thought? If they do that, and let's say Soldier Boy uses his power, but they kill him in the process, then they all lose their powers. And then realistically, the only people you, who's left with power would be what? All the women, basically? Because you would have Mae, if she's still alive. Mm -hmm. You'd have Stormfront, or not Stormfront, uh, Starlight. Who else? A-Train, if he's alive, but I think he's Black probably... Black Noir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Black Noir is still out there. And there's I mean, a bunch. Of, there's a bunch of soups that are just out there. Like that's the thing about the boys. Like they can keep just bringing in more soups. Like especially after I watched like Diabolical, and mm -hmm. saw just how many random superheroes there are out there. Like they got plenty to pull from. They also got that prison full of soup, people with superpowers to pull from. Like it, they can do. Ooh, like, can you cool. imagine Homelander without any powers? No. Talk really? about well, just yeah. the way that he he just projects himself. I wonder how that would play out. But no, it's this one. Yeah, I, I do agree with you, Keaton. I, I do think that uh, at the end of the day, they're gonna want to live with you know the devil they know rather than the devil that they don't know. Right. right. And then, but that'll put a huge chip on Homelander's you know ego, which is what he needs anyway. But it'll mm -hmm. be it'll be neat to see how they'll be able to keep him in check. Right. And I want to know what happens with the deep. Him and that octopus. You know, I, I know. No. <laughs> it's a <laughs> wrap. <laughs> no, see, I was about to go a completely different route with I, that. But, yeah, um, I uh that, that threw me And that's what I don't wanna I don't wanna say it, but they're gonna I think they're gonna probably pull a their version of January six. I actually um, yeah. it's like with the cap storm of the capital. Like I think they're gonna do so, something where it's like either not this season, that's where they're heading. They're being so meta, like with this show, mm -hmm. and they shot this show during <laughs> during the pandemic, and mm -hmm. that was like one of the big things they did. You know, they had the storyline with Black Lives Matter with A Train and stuff. And I'm like, I think that's really what they're heading, but they might do that worse, reverse like a soup storming the. <laughs> so, so I think what they could do is nobody knows at this point just yet. Well, now I guess now they know what Starlight just said. The Soldier Boy, everybody's American hero, is now the person that is causing bodily harm to the civilians and whatnot. And at, at a certain point, of course, he's going to lose it. Yeah. And I probably, to get the public eye back, Homelander is going to quote unquote stop uh, Soldier Boy with the help of the boys, which is probably the thing that's going to end up happening. Uh, that's that's my prediction. Um, but by the end of it, like you said, somebody's going to go to the Oval Office, and from that, I'm not sure what that's going to do. But I think that that is, I think that's where we're heading for sure. And I, I guess, like you said, once somebody is at the Oval Office, the heroes are going to try to storm it but we don't know who's gonna do that we don't know if it's gonna be like starlight and the boys or if it's gonna be the superheroes that feel as though they can control things better i think um, it'll be the superheroes the suits, I, think it'll, I, think it'll, I think it'll definitely be the superheroes only reason Super why lives matter up, like the well, only reason why i bring up that is because this show has always flipped it right so say you have somebody that is in the oval office like um, Nadia, um, and everybody like Huey and everybody know what she's doing, what she's capable of, how corrupt she is, and there's no way to get her out. I don't know. I mean, the show is yeah, so meta. I don't know. Right. That, that could be I, it. And I could, this is a crazier thing. Like, I could see, like, I could picture a shot <laughs> and eventually she kind of like, well, I want to let you guys know I have superpowers. I will always protect you guys and like heroes are running towards the cap and she's just destroying them from afar. I mean, this show could go crazy. I, I really don't know. At this point, after this episode, anything can go. Um, but what do you guys rate this episode from uh, one to ten? Oh, this is a ten. This is a ten episode. Yeah. This is a ten episode. 
Yeah. As far as far as far as the boys goes, this was this was a ten episode, definitely. So you think it's the best episode of the boys? I think it's up there. I definitely think it's up there. Uh, it's been a long time since I've rewatched the boys because there's some great episodes that are out there. But yeah, this was this was easily top three, if not number one. Yeah. 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 Uh, so. It- yeah. Okay, oh, Mike. Go ahead. No, no. I just say your top ten. I, I know I said the best episode, like so far. I just almost I can't see. I I gotta go back, look back at certain episodes in season one, season two. But like as a from start to finish, where just like you were fully engaged, and I don't feel there was a slow moment. If anything, it was just building in anticipation of what was coming. So again, the pacing, all the stuff, screenwriting one on one. Uh, you know, for action. Choreography and it's shot like ang- uh, you know angles of actually seeing a fight and not seeing shaky cam. You know that again, I, 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 I don't know. I just I have not seen that, at least from the boys recently, other than like with this episode from start to finish. So that's why I say best uh, episode so far. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're gonna be back for episode seven. Heck, we might even look at it right now. Anyway, we'll talk to you guys later. We'll leave you guys with this little image right here. (laughs) Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell button. Go and check out all of our other shows that we've covered. Keaton has covered um, Umbrella Academy Season 3, which should be out right now. Um, Jedi Mike and I, we've been covering some other stuff that's coming on the horizon that you guys can't wait for, such as Westworld. Um, Jorge is going to be covering some interesting things as well with Tribeca. So we've got a lot of content here and we hope for you guys subscribe hit the bell button and go oh mike where can everybody find your channel and information yeah you can find me on youtube at jetta mike seven reviews news and truth um i do similar things on the content um here but also we're working with uh team jbs and stuff and it's a pleasure every time you guys have me is always a treat and a blessing so thank you guys um appreciate it we are happy to have you, and this eggplant is very happy to have you as well. No, don't. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs>